that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, you're letting our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. Hello and welcome to the tavern. I'm Travis Sivart of TravisSivart.com and Incredible sci-fi and fantasy books. And my vices tonight here in the tavern will be Tin Cup American Whiskey. I'm loving this stuff. I've enjoyed their rye, their bourbon, and their whiskey. What about you, Ed? Okay. We're, we're, tell me more. Tell you more? Oh. I mean, I can go grab the bottle, but each one comes with this cool little tin cup right on the top of the bottle. So you kind of get a shot glass with it. I want one just with a little tin cup. Uh, I'll save it for you. I mean, it'll be empty, but I'll save it for you. Damn. Yeah, I know, right? Empty. Maybe I'll think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, maybe I'll think to get you one next time we come over to visit, whenever that may be. Yeah. Oh, and my vice tonight is uh, it's a Miomi Rose. Yummy. Um, how about you, Andre? Oh. So my advice tonight is tea in my reusable cup, knitting, and a cat on my lap. Nice. Mouse I is... I had a cat on my lap. Hey, how you going? <laughs> Mouse has got a strawberry banana smoothie, and Maria's vice tonight is tiny cupcakes. I assume they're the size of dwarf gumdrops. They're not tiny cupcakes. They're cupcake vitamins. <laughs> don't don't you have a word for that that you use? Oh, what? Baby Muppets? That would be it, I guess. I call them Baby Muppets. There you go. Maria says, sugary goodness is what they are. Okay, tonight on the tavern, we're going to raise our glasses and our opening toast to, uh... Here's to making the world a better place no matter how much we screw it up trying to do it. Here, here. So we want to talk about, is green really green? And not in the Kermit way, where it ain't easy being green. But in the going green way. And Ed, you suggested this topic. So I'm guessing you heard something, read something, did something, saw something that brought this to mind. I'm always suspect, that's all. So is, is it really going to work? That is. Is there any particular particular part that you'd like to start talking about first? Sure. We, we can start with lithium battery. With what batteries? Well, lithium battery. For cars lithium. or for like rechargeable for ones cars. that we've had in the house since the 80s? For cars. For, for cars. For cars. Okay. Yeah, because I know one of the concerns with. Drilling for oil is how much it tears up the earth. Right. Take a look at a lithium. What's it do? Tears up the earth. Big gaping holes looking for lithium. Oh, looking for lithium. Earth metal. See, yeah. you're talking about finding it. My thoughts yeah. are like went straight to how do we get rid of it once it's done? And that comes later. Because if we could do this real quick. Going back to non-electric cars, you ever seen how they get rid of these things? Just miles and miles of crushed cars made in the walls in a junkyard. Mm -hmm. They don't recycle, even the old metal ones. Yeah, they, they don't, don't recycle. They just sit there and ooze into our groundwater. I don't know what they're doing with them. <laughs> Well, They're saving them to build a house. If you notice in all the like apocalypse movies, it's all those cars. So we're probably going to need them in the apocalypse. So what you're <laughs> saying is those cars are useful because they use them when they make apocalyptic movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Sounds well, good to me. Yeah. yeah. That gives us a reason for him. Let me read a few comments here. Uh, Maria says, depends. I mean, some stuff is a gimmick. Some is real. Personally, I feel like it's a little too little, a little too late. Then asked, uh, does that count a chemical waste? Because that's the whole issue. And Maria points out, they're doing nothing with these cars. Gary says, I've heard that they could be charged for a lot longer than we currently are currently able to charge it for. Energy is all around us, but we're stupid. Yeah, yeah, that is a, a good point. So, well, all those are good points. So, is green really green? What other things are we doing? So... We're supposed to go it to be a paperless society and save trees. The more paperless we become, the more paper I see this being used. Yeah. And by the way, I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't go paperless, but at least trees are a renewable resource. Sure. But when we but look here's at... Here's the thing. Uh -huh. People are like, oh my God, the forest, the forest. That's not... That's not exactly how it is. Because, I mean, even out here, we have land where they grow trees really, really fast that's used just for paper because there's a paper mill out here. And every time they use it, they plant more. Mm -hmm. But that's all it's for. They're not going to the rainforest and pulling it down to make paper. So. They're pulling local Virginia forest, but replanting. Um, Maria says, I mean... If you recycle your paper, I don't see an issue. Maria, here's the problem with recycling your paper. A lot of places where we send our recycling don't recycle it. They throw it in a landfill. Mm. Um, a small example is our, our local trash pickup company, one near us that we saw. They have you put out your recycling and your regular trash and then they dump them right into the same garbage truck <laughs> in the same compartment and drive off. Mm. So, you know, I would, I, I agree. If we would recycle as we should recycle, and not just on the individual level, though that's super important, but beyond that, I mean, a lot of times the recycling, it's paid to be put onto barges and taken overseas somewhere. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. Hmm. We Things recycle. that really... Oh, oh go I'm ahead. sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so one of the things that really bothered me when I worked in retail, big box stores, the amount of paper and cardboard and trash, and not all of that is recyclable. So... That's it. We recycle a lot of paper ourselves because um, uh, we burn a fireplace, which isn't exactly green, okay? But we make paper logs out of it. Uh, uh, any boxes or so forth that we receive a package in, we use it as far start. We don't throw away paper in our we try to cut down on its use by using diapers instead of paper towels. Or, or or whatever or what have you napkin something we can wash <laughs> well we use a lot of diapers especially with cast iron and everything okay to be clear for everybody out there ed is referring to cloth diapers as a cleaning towel yeah as a cleaning towel but he is getting to that age where it may have other uses soon too not quite not quite not quite so yeah just to clarify he's not talking about yeah you know campers um and he's yeah. talking about like, what? although i hear if you let it dry it makes a good flower starter as well oh, that makes sense um i know in the 70s before disposable diapers became all the rage cloth diapers had a million and one uses mm -hmm. like waxing your car nothing better than a cloth diaper to do that apparently cleaning mm -hmm. cast iron which i didn't know um so yeah, apparently that type of material. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maria says, same as Canada. I think it's all across Canada. It could just be Nova Scotia. Making individual plastics like straws illegal 
We aren't actually saving turtles. But we could just invest some money in actually cleaning up the oceans. That would be different, but people are going to people. We have to recycle here. It's the law. A lot of places, but not not in the U.S., I found. Like in other countries, they do composting bins. They, they do everything. Like when it's trash day, there's like four different bins because they have to. When I'm recording audiobooks, my voice gets very rough. So I try to make sure, and podcasts also, so I try to make sure I have a big mug of something to pop in my mouth. And you know one thing I love to pop in my mouth? The first thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about popping things in my mouth? Titties. That's right. Tit Tees is an incredible brand of tea. And they have multiple types from green tea to white tea to um, herbal tea to my favorite black tea. It's Lit Fam is what that one's called. And talking to Mike at Titties, and you can talk to him also at T-I-T-T-E-A-S dot com. That's Titties dot com. T-I-T-T-E-A-S dot com. This company, these, this small business that's that's doing this out of love and the joy of sharing something. They also donate 5% of every month's revenue to Breast Cancer Research Foundation, supporting awareness programs and breast cancer research. So I got this incredible tea with this great sense of humor that matches so many things that I do, and they care about other people. I couldn't go wrong with this. And now I have a big old mug full of titty to pop in my mouth to keep my voice smooth and rounded, which is exactly how I like my titties. So check them out at titties.com. Use the code Travis20. That's Travis20 to get a discount on yours. And uh, yeah, pop a titty in your mouth. You're welcome. Breast regards. Here's the deal with going. At one point in time, 50, 60 years ago, we had all kinds of recycling plans in place. It was part of our culture. It's what, And when I say us, I mean the U.S. I'm specific here. It was part of our culture. You, you took rubber back. You took oil back. You took glass paper, you burn things, mm -hmm. whether it was in a mm -hmm. compost pile or whether it was in your fireplace, you had a separate bag just for paper trash that you threw into your wood stove or your fireplace right. or your backyard fire pit with the leaves, whatever. And right. then the 60s and the 70s came along and beyond, and we became a very disposable, convenience-based society. And Previously, we used to get money for recycling. They paid us to recycle. And now, we have to pay them for us to be allowed to recycle. Right. And, and but the bottom line is, what, however it comes out, there's some things we just don't need. And a lot of this one-use plastics are that way. Why should we, you know, if somebody wants to drink at a fast food restaurant, why not carry their own cup? There are bazillion cups you could buy that are much better than theirs. What do you want to say, Andrea? With that, yes, that is great. And they used to do that where I used to take my cup and get it refilled and get a discount. But since COVID and things, oh, no, we're not touching your cup. We're not. You, they won't do that. And as far as one use plastics, I understand both sides of it. For us normal citizens, mm -hmm. we don't always need it. Hospitals, um, medical things, that is needed because you don't, you can't properly sanitize or clean things and you don't want to spread illness. So there, there's like a two side to everything. Right. Right, there is. And Maria says, I've noted that cloth menstrual pads seem to be trying to make a comeback. But it's so much easier to just throw a pad away a few times a day 
Hold on a second. Cat on my lap, and he's stepping on my ear bud wire. There we go. Um, throw a pad away rather than doing a bloody wash. People in general are going to choose what's convenient, not what's green. And then she told me to go fuck myself, saying I like my purse work. What if I randomly come across a party and need it for cake? Maria, there's nothing wrong with a purse fork. Matter of fact, if more people carried a purse fork, we'd have less waste, wouldn't we? Less, less, less. And also, if you carry a metal purse fork, somebody attacks you, fucking stab them with a metal fork. Mm -hmm. Go have cake. <laughs> so I want to speak on the um, cloth menstrual products. Mm -hmm. I, so Maria, yes, I understand that. Um, I use that. But I also have the other ones just in case. You never know because whatever. But it's not so much the convenience. It's better for you if you do it. And it might take a little more steps. But if you think about it, as a female, we already have enough problems. We don't need all the chemicals and things. Like a lot of people are not using disposable diapers because of the chemicals that puts in the earth and their baby and all the other things. Same thing with that. Just my two cents. Yeah, I'd like to say if you're going to put chemicals in your body, pay top dollar for them and get the good ones that make you feel happy. <laughs> it's, uh, but also, when you look at these things, originally they build these items on convenience. Later, they build them and build as an advertised marketed these items on cost effectiveness that they're way cheaper right. than these other things now they're more expensive than going out and buying cloth diapers now of course i, I don't want to wash a shitty diaper if i had a baby but i don't uh you know and as for the menstrual pads and whatnot i've been around long enough i know on the right day it doesn't matter what you're wearing you're washing blood out of some clothes. It's just going to happen now and then. But it's going to be cheaper to do it out of a cloth one instead of the disposable ones. To keep a few disposable ones around for those emergencies, like um, going on an airplane. I think that's an example. Do laundry. Yeah, laundry day. <laughs> but, I used cloth diapers too um, when the kid was little. It was better for the environment, more cost-effective. Yeah, sometimes you run into issues, but you do that with anything. I just wouldn't know so, where to wash them out. I assume you just, like, slap the poop out of them into the toilet and then throw them in the shower and hit them with the removable shower head? Okay, and I'm talking about the diaper, not the kid. Oh, you can do that with oh. both. I mean... <laughs> yeah. We skipped I mean, that episode. <laughs> we did. Everybody had their own method, you know? Right. And hey, Tal, Tal says cloth pads are wonderful. Wow. Yeah, and Maria says you can buy shampoo bottles where you go in and refill the bottle to save the plastic. To refill the bottle, it costs more than buying a new one with the new plastic bottle. If it yeah, costs... I, I was going to... Go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry. Yeah, go on. I was going to bring that up because you... a, a lot of products, a lot of green products are showing up in stores these days. And... I go into the store because I try to be somewhat environmental. And I go down the shopping aisle, and there's green soap, there's the regular shit, plastic. The green stuff is twice as much, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what is the price going green, you know? Right. Especially in the economy we have today, you can't afford it. I've seen recycled paper products that cost more than exactly. not recycled. And I'm like, wait. What? And that's a lot of the problem. Because with all the the newer stuff or the chemical laden things, they can make them cheaper because they make them in bulk. Whereas some of the things that are better, like when I make lotions or soaps and things, you have to make a smaller batch. Smaller production. And it takes more time. A couple more comments here. And by the way, I do want to point out that we have people from Canada from Australia, from Germany, all in our chat right now. So we've got a great kind of... I'll drink to that. World <laughs> we got a drink to that, too. 
But hello, Marlene. Good to see you. And she says you can also buy soap bars that are not in bottles at all. Same for detergent, for laundry, etc. Lots of options without plastic bottles. And there are. Mm -hmm. Andrea makes her own laundry detergent. Yeah, I make our laundry soap. Um, and the big, huge plastic thing that we got cheese balls in, we ate all the cheese balls, and then I make the laundry soap and I fill it up, and that's good for about a year. Right. Maria says, unless the cost levels out so green is the same price as normal, then not enough people can afford to switch. Maria, it's got to be cheaper than normal. It's got to be cheaper than normal. We have to show a real reason to use green products. People aren't just going to switch. We all talk a good game about saving the environment and making a better world for those who come after us. But we all have those moments where, oh, I just don't feel like it. I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is. Um, so, but back to the very first thing we started with, lithium batteries. Ed, you were mm -hmm. talking about how much it fucks up the earth just to dig the lithium out of the earth. Mm -hmm. Lithium, cobalt. Now, how about getting rid of it? Getting rid of it? They don't have a recycling in place to get after it's used up? Yeah. Maria Maria mentioned, uh, don't mean to change, Maria yeah. mentioned wind power, you know, mm -hmm. windmills kill birds, um, and they don't even have an estimate how many birds are killed by wind. How green can that be if we're killing birds you know don't get me wrong i i think we need to do something we need because we're fucking up the planet but i feel like sometimes we're jumping on this green train and everything has got to be green and we're not thinking this through any more than people did 100 years ago when we started all the factories and or 150 years right. ago with the factories and automobiles and so forth. we're still not thinking it all the way through so if we jump on the green train, where are we going to be 50 years from now with all the lithium batteries, all the solar panels that are no longer viable? Right. Where are we going to be with that? We're going to be in the same boat. Have I told you about graphene? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about graphene. <laughs> and by the way, uh, Gary says, I Gary has been to our house and he says, I saw that cheese ball container. You guys must have orange Cheeto guts. Uh, here's what I'll tell you, Gary. It took us months to go through that Cheeto container, and I think part of them was fed to the birds. Well, the ones that Ed didn't hit with his wind turbine thing. It's a... And as for that, Ed, I mean, if wind power is actually a viable, renewable source, we still hit how many birds with just our cars. You know, you don't see us taking those off the road. They could. They could, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't even see us going to mass transportation and putting in reasonable bus and train routes. Yeah, Andrea. If we had, yeah, speaking of that, if we had, like, public transportation here, I would so use it. It'd be cheaper than the gas, but we don't even have it out here because mm -hmm. we're in the middle of nowhere. I'll hitch a ride on a cow. Happy trails to you. Uh, Gary yeah, says... You mentioned, sorry. Sorry. Andrea, go. You mentioned the... Oh, go. Andrea. <laughs> then Ed. Oh, okay. Um, Gary says, you know, people should ride bikes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. It takes me over an hour by car to get to work. I can't do that on a bike. And that's what I want to bring up. Gary said people should ride bikes, and and uh, uh, you mentioned mass transportation. I did read an article about a woman recently. who was talking about how we all need to rethink. We need to design cities better so people can take mass transportation and live closer to their job, and everybody should move out of the country and and live in these new designed cities. Thank mm -mm. you. I saw that fucking movie. I don't want to be a part of that. Which movie was that? 
I don't know. It's a bad sci-fi movie. I know that much. Yeah, like every dystopian movie ever? <laughs> <clears throat> Here's what I'll tell yeah. you. There are studies done about when you have a certain amount of people in a certain amount of square mileage or, or kilometerage, whatever, um, the human brain fights against it. It rebels against it. And we start getting mm. very... Uh, we get psychological issues. Um, so, yeah, it's not healthy to be crammed into cities long term. It's just uh, we're still an animal that needs... Yeah, there is stress too, Gary. Let me read a few comments here so nobody thinks we're ignoring them. Uh, Maria says, I feel like we need to figure out how to use limitless resources instead of limited ones. It's renewable resources, to use the other term. There is only so much lithium in the world. There's only so much coal. However, things like solar and wind should always be around. Would have an easier impact on the earth. Hello to Rachel. Thank you for popping in. Marlene says, thinking of pricing, it would be good for us to eat less meat. And I, th and there are, I think it'd be actually helpful to produce less, better meat at higher price to force less consumption. No. <laughs> I'm a fucking carnivore through and through. Um, Marlene says, continues with, and similar to soap, etc. Sometimes I think the price would be the same if we would reduce usage to a normal level. Like the amount of soap, etc. we use for the shower gels is just out of proportion to what's needed. Like with a pea-sized drop of shampoo, you could wash a whole car. Yet we squeeze like a good puddle in our hands every night. Yes, Andrew. That. A lot of the products, like especially liquid detergent and things, it's mostly water. Mm -hmm. Right. To make you have to use more. So that's why I use bar soap. And with the laundry soap, I don't use the liquid because even if I made it myself, it's like so much water. You have to add 50% or more water to make it liquid. So that's how it breaks I, I, down. I don't know if anybody on here is a Doc Bonner soap user or not. I love that stuff because just a little drop of that will go a long freaking way. You can use it on your body, use it in dishes with it. You I talk about your camping soap, soap, right? Yeah, that's good shit, man. I love that. <laughs> you put one drop on your hands, you are rinsing those hands for like 20 minutes to try to get that damn soap off. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> um. You love a great story, fantasy, swords and sorcery, sci-fi, cyberpunk, cyberpulp. Look up Travis Sivart on Amazon and other fine retailers for ebooks, paperbacks, hardbacks, and audiobooks. And enjoy. So yeah, there's there's a lot of things here, and we're not thinking it through. Yet. So I'm agreeing with Ed on that one, and I see a lot more in the chat here with different ideas and different problems um but yeah this is what needs done we need to consider not just how to remove issues we currently have but not create new issues as we remove other ones hey jock thanks for stopping in um And there's, you know, in the chat, there's discussion of maybe we don't need as much meat in our diets, which is true. You know, biologically speaking, you know, personal preference speaking is a different story, but biologically speaking, we don't need as much meat, especially as much as we eat here in the U.S. But yeah, I was going to say in the U.S., we uh, Americans usually in the U.S., they usually have meat as the main where in some other countries, everything else is the main and meat is a side. So, yeah. Ed. yeah. Marlene says, yeah, I'm not saying veggie, but every night meat isn't needed. Marlene, my wife is going to disagree with you. <laughs> Apparently Maria is going to also. <clears throat> so Marlene, yeah, I'm saying there, there's credibility to what you're saying. And of course, as Ed just pointed out, personal preference is personal preference. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Maria also uh, pointed out but this is what we're doing. We're creating a knee-jerk reaction as a solution without looking at the problems those solutions will cause. And sometimes the things... <laughs> I, 
I'm admire, <laughs> I, I'm amused by the carnivore comments in chat right now. Um, <clears throat> especially for Rachel. Yeah. It's, uh, but see, I've always wondered why our government doesn't do something like this. Look, we got colleges. Why not take your top colleges, three separate colleges, give them a two year program where they bring students in to study one given problem, whether it's the infrastructure or whether it's, you know, the uh, recycling or whether it's how to balance welfare and social security, whatever. We've got these genius colleges with this resource of people that they can earn degrees doing this work and they spend two years in a study for this or whatever it takes, six months, five years, whatever, and then bring a comprehensive, unbiased report. Because if you take three colleges from three different parts of the U.S. and have them each do the same study, you at least get... Uh, you know, if you put Berkeley and Harvard on the same project, you're getting two different points of view here. And I'm just saying we have the resources to think this stuff through. And with older college professors guiding younger minds, which are fresh and, and hungry to do these ideas, um, we have resources. We could do this. So on the, on the same note, we should look at what other countries do too, because if everybody takes from everybody else, so there should be a solution because there's some places that do some things better than other, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and hold on, I'm, I'm reading a comment. Rachel says, National Geographic is full of short documentaries on people who revive barren lands, some revered reversed effects after only a decade with minimal work. These things are, they're, they're possibilities. They're things that could be done. We can recycle effectively. And to recycle effectively, we have to stop using things that can't or won't be recycled. Right. Or if we need to use them for our modern world, then they need to be used minimally. And I love having a car of my own and Andrea having her own car. But do we need two cars if we could walk a half mile to a bus stop or a train station and get to Richmond an hour from us or Fredericksburg an hour from us without an issue? Yeah, Andrea? I used to do it pretty much almost all my life public transportation, you walk, you get on the bus, you go wherever you need to go, and you can go pretty much anywhere. Right. But then there's places that, you know, you can't. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but I'm saying it's, and also with moving people or products, there's, sh we used to have a really good train infrastructure for moving product, one engine pulling dozens of cars. And now we have 18 wheelers pulling one thing. And some of it well, is across country. Well, one of the problems with that is our factory infrastructure today. Um, we used to build in a factory. Every part needed to be used to build a product was built in one factory. Um, so the train car could pull up, unload at the loading dock, and boom. We don't have that factory infrastructure today. One thing's built here, one thing's built there. Right. Most of it's built overseas. So we don't have the same factory infrastructure today. I'm not well, making that's, no excuse, but that is. Well, that's fact. something else we could look at, Ed. And this is, again, the bigger picture the world economy, as opposed to individual country economy and working together with each other. <sighs> so. So yes. Rachel's saying, bring back trains and hear her out. Nuclear trains. <laughs> she, she's not wrong, though. She puts naval ships are powered by a nuclear reactor. and Those things are out at sea, prime target for tampering. Um, so, yeah, there's I, I also look, guys, go grab my book, Silver and Smith Chronicles. 
there is a lot of my ideas on how to fix infrastructure into play. Now, corporations are still massive monsters who are out to control the world, blah, blah, blah. Don't get me wrong. It's interesting. But I also went forward and put forward the here's, you know, if good infrastructure existed, how you can get around. If we looked into alternate things, uh, graphene is all over the place in those books. Um, as well as... Uh, magnetic propulsion and not just in trains and cars but in personal one-person vehicles as well as flight and whatnot so there are options out there but to create more problems or just a different set of problems as a solution that's not a real solution isn't the answer no um and what we're going to end up doing is breaking shit so bad we will go back to the bronze age mm -hmm. we will go back to horse and buggy chopping firewood and if we're lucky able to forge steel but probably forging copper tin and other soft oh my God. where are we going to put a horse <laughs> we have two acres Wait, you said horse or whores? Whatever. Same thing. No, one, it's legal to have sex with. The other one, mm -mm. you get on a list for that shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's raise a glass to hopefully our species. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Gary says horse tables. It's called a pimp. Uh, yeah, raise a glass to hopefully our species don't continue to be the dumbasses we have been historically and modernly, and we can pull our heads out of our asses and find real solutions instead of more problems. Here, here. It's a long toast. It's a big wish. Mm -hmm. Ed, any closing thoughts on this? No, we, we've said it pretty good throughout the whole show. Andrea, you got anything? Reuse, recycle, go green! What about repurpose? No repurposing? We're just going to reuse and recycle? No repurpose? You're a repurpose. monster. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, make sure you recycle this show and send it off to some other friends so they can watch it, too. It costs you nothing, yeah. and it saves them a lot of bitching on their own because we did it yeah. for them. So we'll see you on the next tavern. Here's to all y'all. <laughs> <laughs>